Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. You are welcome to Ventspils NAFTA and Latvijas Kudniecību webinar. To tell news about Ventspils NAFTA and Latvijas Kudniecību, we have two hosts today, Mr. Robert Kirkup, the chairman of the Ventspils NAFTA and Latvijas Kudniecību Management Board, and Mr. Paul Thomas, the member of Latvijas Kudniecību Management Board. During the webinar, you will be informed about Ventspils NAFTA and Latvijas Kudniecību latest activities and financial results of the first quarter 2014, as well as audited financial results of 2013. But before uh, we start the presentation, I would like to remind you that right after the presentation, we will open the floor for questions and answers session. Please use the chat pod on your right side of the screen to send in questions. We have also received questions via investors portal now this latest .lv, that will be given preference. We will address the rest of the questions afterwards. Robert, the floor is all yours with the presentation. Thank you very much. Good morning, uh, welcome, and thank you very much for joining us uh, today at uh, our webinar. Um, I'd like to start off looking at an overview of, um, of Ventspils NAFTA Group. Um, I know most of you are already aware of this, but uh, Ventspils NAFTA is a holding company. We have uh, three what we refer to as daughter companies. You have Ventspils NAFTA Terminals, which is uh, obviously based in Ventspils on the coast. You then have Latvian Shipping Company and Latros Trans, which is the pipeline uh, business. Um, we can look at, the, um, at all the ownerships. Um, within Ventures NAFTA, uh, the majority um, owner is Euromin Holdings, which is a 100% uh, VTOR company. Uh, the other major shareholder is uh, Latvia's NAFTA Transit, uh, who own 43.25%, and they are um, ultimately majority controlled by Ven Bunkers. So there's a little bit of uh, interrelationships uh, there. I think I'll leave the rest of the um, ownerships for now, but if you've got any questions, please ask later. Move to the next slide. Overview of the, of the Ventures NAFTA group. A lot of people believe that we're actually a fully integrated uh, company. However, it's not, not quite correct. The, the relationship um, in a business sense is really between Latros Trans, the pipeline business, which runs from uh, the Belarusian border to the coast um, at um, Ventspils. So that is a business that leads straight into the terminal um, and then into export. Uh, the vessel business, although many people would, uh, would imagine we would use our own vessels to, to load um, products of the group, it actually um, acts very independently just because of the nature of the, um, of the uh, uh, tanker market. And, and Paul Thomas later on will, will explain a little bit more on that. Um, so if further, again, further questions, please ask. Uh, this is a slide just to, to, to reiterate that uh, the linkage in our business, as you see the pipelines running from, from the border of Belarus all the way to the coast um, through various of the, um, um, of the locations where we have um, offices. It also runs slightly into Lithuania. Um, we have 80 kilometers of, um, of our distillate pipeline that goes across the uh, Lithuanian uh, territory. And um, we would like to buy that, um, that piece of pipeline just to to secure our business going forward is obviously a, um, a concern in the business that uh, any problem uh, that another company owns part of your pipeline, if they have an issue and, and, uh, and you don't control it, that can be a threat to, to our business. So we would like to highlight that as, as, as a, a wish list um, to, to try and achieve the purpose of that going forward. This um, slide, I think, is, is we've used it before, but I think it very well illustrates um, the complexity uh, um, of the business. Um, as I said, if you look at the bottom, you have your ships, which Paul will discuss later on. Uh, we've also got railways. Uh, we move up to 5 million tons um, of products a year on railways to Ventspils and after terminal. And, um, uh, you know, that's a complex. Um, each, you know, railway wagon is only 65 tons, so you can do the maths yourselves. There's an awful lot of logistics, so we have a lot of operators and you have to have reception facilities at the terminal, so it's a complex business. Um, that also feeds in and into the, um, uh, the pipeline, which is on the left-hand side, and you look at the amount of shore tanks, 105 shore tanks of different sizes, and that is so we can load and, um, and have uh, different products at the same time in the terminal. We also receive uh, ships into the terminal, so we don't just export, we actually take in uh, cargo, um, and that loads through jetties, which you remember there was a little bit of an issue last year on the complex services agreement with them bunkers, but we're pleased to report that for now that that is uh, under control. I think it's important that we always look at, um, at what we do within um, 
within the local environment, um, and we're proud of, uh, of this slide. Um, VN Group's revenues, 166 million euros. I think revenues sometimes can be misleading, um, but I think the, the later numbers are what's really important. 99% you know, of our uh, income comes from foreign cli clients, so that's from the um, importers of oil and then the exporters. Um, and then there's, there's 62 million, uh, which is spent directly on local supply, so directly into the local economy. So we think that's a, a you know, big benefit to the uh, Latvian economy. Um, we're also an important component of the Latvian stock market, and you know, we'd like to, uh, to see that uh, strengthen. We're obviously concerned at times that there's a lack of liquidity um, on our shares, but um, I think with the ownership structure, it's always hard to achieve um, genuine uh, liquidity and therefore price discovery on, on shares. As you can see, Events was NAFTA and LSC, 14% of Latvian companies listed transactions, uh, more than 23,000 shareholders. I would like to see all of our shareholders actually consider um, trading on their shares. I think, sadly, a lot of people perhaps don't even realize they have shares um, or how to actually um, trade them. So I think perhaps the, um, um, the regulators here need to, to address that issue because a lot of the time our shares don't really trade. Financial performance. I think a lot of you are, are very, uh, you've read all the, um, the accounts, so I'm not going to sort of go over this too much, and I think I'll leave it to you to, to ask many questions. Um, I think, you know, we look at we're on a net profit basis, we're improving. Um, I think 2013, you know, you see that anomaly. Uh, it, that was really because of the, uh, we wrote down a lot of assets um, in our pipeline business. Uh, so, um, I think the, the company was, was in the financial sense, was a little bit unbalanced with, with um, devaluing small amounts every year and always reporting a small, a small loss, even though we're cash flow positive. So we took, um, which I believe, a fairly bold decision to, to write down a lot of those assets to now get the, the, the balance sheet in order and, um, and then we'll be reporting um, you know, small profits, we hope, going forward. So I think it'll be a much more stable um, and easier business for, for all our shareholders to analyze. Transparency and corporate governance. Obviously, this is an important uh, issue today, and um, you know we do put a lot of time and effort. And I have to thank all our employees who um, who really do um, try hard to to um, improve the company. Um, and you know we're pleased that we can report uh, very recently, only last week, last Thursday, uh, Vents for Sustainable Terminal. As you can read, we got the Gold Award at the Sustainability Index. Um, they were very proud of that, and, and I'm pleased that um, Lars Pans left the head of the terminal. Uh, managed to receive that. At the same awards, um, Latras Trans also got the Bronze Award, um, and Eagles was there to, to receive that, which was, which was great. Um, last, or early in the year, Vents was NAFTA, Best Interactive Investor Relations in the Border Securities Market, awarded by NASDAQ. So we thank them for recognizing us, and I think that's a, um, a big improvement um, on, on previous years. So I think we'll have to keep, keep trying. Future prospects, um, I'm sure this is the area that you're all um, mostly interested in. Um, you know, we're going to carry on reviewing of group assets. And by that, um, we've got quite, I believe in the, in the group, quite a complex balance sheet. Um, we have a lot of property um, on, on various companies' balance sheets. Um, and my view is that we should look to, where possible, to, 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 to um, sell these. Um, we would like to concentrate on our core business and uh, not be distracted by, by these assets. Um, I'm pleased to report that we're, um, we're working close to selling a property on Jacoba Street or Jacoba Ayala um, in Riga, and I hope that, uh, that both in the third, fourth quarter that will be sold. Uh, we've also got small investment in a pharmaceutical company, which we're also looking to, to hopefully um, uh, dispose of within this year. It's not providing any revenue and I uh, believe that the, um, the risk to the corporate um, company or the group um, is better being out of these sort of companies. Continue to seek opportunities. Um, we've discussed in the past um, about trying to use the empty crude oil pipeline for gas, um, and these are the sort of things that we are continuing to, 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 to look at. Improvement of efficiency of core business and cost management. I think there is a question on this already, but. Um, we are going to carry out a, a full review in the third and fourth quarter uh, of the group's internal structure. 
um, and uh, to see you know whether it really matches what we require going forward as a group. We've located uh, or relocated the whole group into uh, Latvian shipping's offices on um, Elizabeth Street. Uh, Ventspils and NAFTA were in the old city of Riga, um, and so we've co-located along with Latras Trans into that building. So there are four businesses in one location, and I believe there will be opportunities to to um, integrate ourselves even further um, where possible. We obviously have to uh, be very aware of regulatory requirements being two listed companies, but um, we would like to to look at um, seeing whether there are some cost savings there. Um, group unified procurements. Um, I'm pleased to report that um, we do uh, negotiate things like health insurance um, and group insurance as a group, um, and then the um, the daughter companies are then billed out for those. Um, our accounting, uh, which PwC currently do for us, that likewise is negotiated at, um, at group level. Um, we also have an internal audit uh, team who audits the whole whole company for us and, and do an excellent job. Um, and likewise, legal services, we also have the ability to, to coordinate it at uh, group level, which I think is, a, is an asset and helps manage um, all the issues and makes the group aware when there are difficulties within daughter companies, which perhaps wouldn't come to light if we weren't uh, monitoring it. Good governance, obviously very important today. Um, and as we said earlier, we are focusing on it. Um, we are facilitating the company relationships. You know, where possible, we'd like to, to, to use each other's um, skills um, and um, you know, make sure that we're, where possible, uh, doing things together rather than um, paying out to other companies. Long-term commitment to major shareholders. I think it's very important that we um, keep the shareholders engaged in what we're doing here in Latvia. You know, it's a small country, and in the global terms, we're a small business as well. So it's important that we we reach out to um, our major investors, let them know what we're doing, show them that we're doing um, a good job, um, and that's a business that they should support long term. And I think this, you know, um, goes into the sort of geopolitical situation we can discuss a little bit later. That you know, it's very important that we that we um, explain the difficulties that we have as a group um, so that our shareholders, where possible, can um, uh, you know, help manage some of that risk. Representing groups' interests, uh, we're a member of FISL and various chambers of commerce, and um, we like to um, you know, be able to reach out to ministers and the government where, where necessary. I think it's an important part of today's business that um, that um, you know, chairmen of management boards have to engage with uh, people, explain the situation as we see it, in a non-political way, but to explain uh, the, the situation and to try and make sure that the interests of the group and the individual companies are, are, are respected and looked after. So to summarise on uh, Ventspils NAFTA, um, as you can see, we're you know becoming a more stable and profitable business. Um, I think. Uh, we expect the pipeline and um, the terminal to have a relatively stable revenue. We're pleased to report that we actually three million tons uh, came through the pipeline already as of, um, as of I think, uh, Tuesday this week. Um, so I think that's a great achievement. We'd like to see further consolidation within the group. Uh, that should potentially add cost savings, but more importantly, to have better controls. We're looking to rationalize our assets, so sell off um, the various uh, properties that we own um, and develop our investor relations further. On the geopolitical situation, obviously everybody's aware of, of problems um, you know, in, in the region. These, this is a major threat to our business. If, if, if it escalates further, you know, and you could potentially see, see flows um, stopping, you know, obviously that would have a, a, a you know, terrible consequence for, for the pipeline and the, um, and the terminal. The shipping business would be largely unaffected because it's not tied to the region. Um, but obviously, the, 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 the core profit part of the business at the moment would be badly hit. I think that finishes uh, for now our Ventspils NAFTA presentation. Um, I will start quickly on the Latvian shipping company before I pass over to Paul Thomas, um, who's the global head of uh, shipping at VTOL and kindly also um, helps oversee a lot of what Latvian shipping does. Uh, financial performance, um, I think we should concentrate again on, on, on the net profits. Um, you know, before I do that, it's important to realize that when you look at these slides, that we have less ships. We have now 16 
um, as of uh, this week. Um, and uh, whilst last year, early last year, we had 20. So you can see that revenues naturally will come down, obviously, as you have less vessels. Um, net profit, uh, we did have some, um, you know, we have some uh, um, sort of write downs of 13.3 million. Um, that's on the further impairments of the fleet. Um, and we're pleased that we've got approximately $20 million of, um, of revenues from a settlement of, um, of, a, of a dispute. Um, so that leaves the 7.3. So if you looked at, if you took those two exceptional items out of the um, out of the balance sheet, you would be looking at a, a 600,000 net profit. So you know that is an improvement. Um, I think at this stage I shall pass over to Mr. Thomas. Much. Yeah, thank you, Robert. And good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I'd like to give you just a brief overview of um, some significant events in uh, LSC over the last 15 months, plus some facts and figures uh, to, to give you a greater understanding of the LSC business uh, model. Um, as uh, Robert's already mentioned, we have a fleet of 16 modern tankers which trade worldwide. They're not limited to the Baltic and it's the nature of that kind of vessel that it, it, it trades on a worldwide basis. Um, it's a modern fleet with an average age of six and a half years and we employ close to 800 seagoing and shore-based um, staff. Um, the overwhelming majority of those are, are Latvian. Uh, very professional management and uh, employees with significant experience in the shipping in the shipping uh, in the shipping industry. Apologies for not changing the slide. Um, at the end of Q1 2014, 82% of the fleet were employed on time charter contracts. This ensures a guaranteed and and steady cash flow for the company which is, is good for our budgeting and it's also um, something that pleases our, uh, our lending banks. Um, the average employment period for the fleet is, uh, excluding the bare boat charters, is, is, is close to eight months. Again, this is giving LSC visibility as to its um, income stream um, throughout uh, 2014. Um, The strategy of LSE continues to um, to ensure that a vast majority of the ships are on time charter. Um, we find that's a much better business model for us, although we do have some a small minority of the of the vessels that do trade on the spot market, which uh, worked quite successfully for us in 2013. Um, Sorry, the screen must have jumped. Um, we have sold three of our Coca class vessels um, throughout 2013, which enabled us to repay a 75 million uh, loan facility. It also enabled us to raise sufficient funds, along with the recent sale of the Riga. Apologies, the screen's jumping. Um, to close a loan facility that we had with DVB and limit, to limit our, our losses under a sale lease back repurchase obligation agreement concluded in 2000 and, uh, 2019. Um, towards the end of 2013, we also agreed uh, some new covenants with our lending banks result, resulting in a permanent financing solution to our 360 million US dollar loan facility. Um, looking now at 2014 and beyond, um, the first quarter of 2014 has proved disappointing for the products tanker segment. Um, especially within the medium range tanker segments within the Atlantic Basin. We have been, we have been um, sheltered from the worst of this disappointing period 
because we have our vessels locked into guaranteed time charters. Um, uh, so far throughout Q2 of 2014, again, spot earnings have proved to be disappointing and there must be some, some concern that the balance of 2014 will not be as positive as some commentators had predicted. So, as I said earlier, the strategy remains that we employ the majority of the fleet on time charter and as previously advised, it's currently 82% of the fleet and we have time charter coverage or guaranteed employment for, for, for close to eight months. The screen's going all over the place. It's just jumping. Yeah, we need to go back. It's, it's gone too far forward. I've not touched it. Uh, okay. Okay. Looking at uh, trends. Okay. Looking at the uh, looking at further trends in the products tanker market going forward. Um, I think the future profitability of LSE and other ship owners will continue to depend on worldwide economic growth, which uh, does still look fragile. Um, to clarify further, economic growth does drive demand for refined oil and this does have an impact on demand for product tankers. Currently that demand is lacking and expectations still remain that in the medium term that economic growth will increase demand for tonnage, but um, I'm, I am concerned that the optimistic economic outlook um, has resulted in an, an increase in the number of new product tankers ordered and are now being, uh, now being delivered. So apart from the new tankers that have already been delivered, yeah, yeah. apart from the new tankers that have been, been delivered, there is also within the MR segment approximately 28% of the existing fleet on order and within the handy segment, 15%. So I am concerned that, um, that the in any increase in vessel supply will comfortably cover any future transportation requirements, um, even if there is greater, greater demand for ships. To summarize, um, for LSE to prosper in future years, we do need to see uh, continued worldwide economic growth and a more disciplined approach from owners in refraining from increasing the size of the world's product tanker fleet. Moving on to the issue of the uh, share capital decrease. Um, at the LSE shareholders meeting yesterday, 99.55% of the shareholders present voted in favour of this share capital reduction. And we would like to thank the Ministry of Welfare for their support on this issue. Uh, it was a logical decision as without this change, the accumulated losses um, would have meant that dividend payments to shareholders any time soon would have been almost impossible. As a consequence of this decision, we can assure, assure, assure shareholders that their equity has not been negatively um, impacted. Thank you for your time. Uh, thank you very much. And forward, we are going to proceed with the questions which were previously sent in. And let's start with the first question. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, several facts, such as appointment of Mr. Kirkops in management board of both Enspils Naft and Latvian Shipping Company, common activities events both companies organize, indicate that you are thinking about further consolidation of both businesses. What is more planned in this regard? How much can you actually save and what do you gain from consolidate, consolidation of both businesses? Are there any upcoming plans in relation to that? Thank you. Uh, thank you. It's Robert again. Um, I alluded in, in my presentation that in the third and fourth quarter we will be looking and addressing this issue. Uh, we'll be doing that then. It's not simply about costs. I think it's also about uh, controls. Um, it's better about having a more integrated uh, group where possible. Um, I think there, are, there will be um, savings, but uh, a lot of the restructuring 
um, on, on, on sheer amounts of people has already been done. Um, each business group does review uh, regularly, you know, does it have the right people uh, doing the right tasks, uh, does it need to employ further, you know, talent, or, or you know, are we uh, perhaps um, um, got too much of the wrong, uh, wrong type of talent. So we do look at it constantly. Um, we are going to review it. I don't want to predict what the actual outcome is, and um, you know, obviously these sorts of issues do affect uh, people in the company. So you should be aware, obviously, that people get very concerned when they when they hear the word restructuring. Um, so I don't I don't think it's going to be a big one. I think we'll just uh, make sure that we're um, focusing on the on the correct areas. Thank you, Robert. And before I proceed with the next question, I would like to remind for participants that you can uh, write uh, on the chat pod on your right screen uh, questions at the moment. So we will ask them afterwards. So next question. Um, some years ago, Ventspils NAFTA Group's representatives said that in order to get back to profitable business, you need to reduce administrative expenses you had in your companies. Is this process finished? What kind of administrative costs have you managed to decrease or maybe eliminate at all? I think, you know, if you look at, um, for an example, um, events was after term law, you know, they, they're now operating with half the, um, the amount of uh, staff as, as before. You know, it wasn't simply about uh, cutting costs because they actually then started paying a lot of the, of the uh, remaining employees uh, far more than they were being paid. Um, so it's not necessarily about always cutting costs. Um, it is potentially trying to reward the, uh, the people to do uh, the best job um, possible. Um, as I said, I think the majority of, of any restructuring has already been done, so I think it's going to be quite a small uh, change, and um, you know, so I don't think you will notice from the outside a uh, uh, you know significant change. Thank you. And next question: Is Latvian shipping company planning to build or buy ships which transport gas? I think in future there will be high demand for this type of ships. Um, yes, I think that's a very good, uh, a very good question. I do think that um, LPG is a is a is a clean form of energy, and you could see it replacing coal and and uh, other other less uh, efficient uh, efficient fuels. So the simple answer is yes. It becomes more complicated on a practical level that if you just invest in one or two ships, you I'm sorry for a small uh, technical disturbance. Ah, yes. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yes, it's a very good question. Yeah, I also uh, believe that the LPG sector is an exciting market going forward. Um, on a theoretical level, um, the answer is yes. It would be a good place to invest uh, if if one has sufficient funds. My concern um, would be that if you only have one or two of such ships, you do not become a powerful player in that particular market. Whereas in the product tanker sector, we are uh, we are a big a big player in that market and a well respected uh, participant in that market. Now that's sort of on a theoretical level. On a practical level, um, it would not be possible for us to invest in new ships at the moment. The simple reason for that, as Robert has already mentioned, we have accumulated cash uh, currently of 36.1 million. We, out of that 36.1 million, we have uh, a significant amount of that cash must be reserved for a minimum cash covenant that we have with our lending banks. And we, on top of that, we need to ensure that we have working capital uh, to ensure that we can run, this, run the company smoothly. So, in simple terms, we're not in a position to invest in new ships at this current time, even if we so wish to, or believed it was the right time. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Paul. Um, next question is, last year you won the Best Interactive Investor Relations Award given to you by the exchange. Is this webinar an attempt to do it again this year? Oh, Krista, you're very... Um, 
mm, cynical, aren't you? Um, of course not. Of course not. No, I think this is just about good governance. It's about um, you know uh, allowing investors or journalists um, or anybody who's interested to have access to us um, and to be able to ask any question, even the. Planning any similar activities in other group companies? This um, this exercise which we've done with um, um, the shipping company, it was you know it's a, it's a group led uh, decision. Uh, we're doing with all the companies. Uh, it's uh, it's a sensible uh, business uh, decision. Um, and you know if you look at LRT with, with the large impairments and uh, losses, we're going to be doing a similar exercise there. So it's it's a group why all the companies are doing this. Um, there's nothing. You know, I know the initial thought is that, you know, well, is this some form of um, economic engineering? It's not at all. It's a very transparent, simple process and very happy for anybody to come into our office and we can explain it to them. Our finance directors are, you know, always available. Um, Caspers or Santa can, can go through exactly what we're doing and why. And, and, and I really would um, recommend anybody who is unsure of what we're doing to actually come in and see us. Uh, thank you, Robert. Uh, next question uh, again from Krista. Uh, question, yeah, to Robert, Mr. Kirkup. Uh, how does the fact that you have been elected in the board of British Chamber of Commerce in Latvia affect your business in Latvia? Will you try to raise awareness about certain critical aspects of Ventspils NAFTA business through the chamber? Um, I think. You know, we have a uh, we have a responsibility, or have a responsibility of the chairman and management board of, of various companies to to try and um, promote our, our business in Latvia and, and abroad. And uh, one of the ways is to be um, members of, of of various chambers. I'm a member of the chamber, um, of course, of you know the British Chamber, and also AmCham, the American Chamber as well. And um, Vitol is um, a member of uh, FISL, which is the Foreign Investors Council in Latvia. Um, so, you know, the AmCham and the FISL, I inherited it from my um, from my two predecessors. Um, Simon Blades was was um, a representative of FISL with Mr. Simon Body, who was the representative of AmCham. Um, so it's not a new it's not a new uh, decision by me. It's just uh, further um, integrating ourselves within Latvia and making sure our voice is heard where where needed. But um, I have to stress, we're trying. You know, it's not a political. Uh, decision. It's very much a business-focused uh, decision. Thank you. And question from Aron Eglitis. Has Ventspils NAFTA or its subsidiaries felt any impact from the geopolitical situation you mentioned, volatility or flows or other changes? I think uh, obviously there's great concern about uh, you know what has been going, going on in the region. Um, and you know, as I highlighted, it is a threat to our business. I have to say that. Um, a lot of the business is long, long term. So um, we rely on, um, uh, in, in this, in this case, it's really Vitol, the Vitol Group, who have long-term contracts um, in Russia, Ukraine, Belarus, <coughs> excuse me, who who attract uh, flows of oil uh, to the region. Now, these aren't necessarily done, you know, a week before shipment. These are often done. On long-term pre-finance um, businesses, so I'm, I'm confident that this year we will have um, solid flows through our, through our business. I think going forward, obviously, that is, is a big question. If there were any further sanctions and and and, and so forth, that would and that escalated, that would obviously stop those contracts. Um, but I'm I'm confident that certainly for the next um, what is it six months that we'll have solid flows of of oil through through our business. Thank you. The next, next question. Coming back to what you said during the presentation, you mentioned that many people probably even don't know that they own Ventspils NAFTA and uh, Latvian uh, shipping company shares. Do you think this can be changed? If yes, how? Are you planning to put your effort to do that as well? 
you know, I mean, it's probably probably a, a question also for Nasdaq um, rather than rather than to me. I'm 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 only arrived really in Latvia on the first of September last year. Um, I think perhaps Fuktuk and, and Nasdaq could address this issue, try to get more awareness. Um, I don't think it's it's secret who are the shareholders. So it can be found through the shareholder register. Um, what has happened recently, obviously everything now is electronic, so it would make trading of shares much more simple. But people probably still have a share certificate from the old days um, somewhere in their attic, and um, they probably need to, you know, again, maybe again ask your grandparents, do you have some shares? And you probably find they do. Um, and um, but you know, that's that's you know, I think that's probably for Nasdaq to address and and perhaps uh, Fuktuk as well. I don't know who else. Maybe any ideas over there? Who should address this? I guess at the moment we don't have any uh, more new questions. Uh, if I see no one is starting to write for participants, you have a last chance, please. Yes, I see there's coming from Aron Aglit a new question, so let's wait a second, please. Okay, he's writing. Uh, while he is writing, I can remind you that uh, after the webinar, the webinar recording also will be available uh, on NASDAQ OMX website. You just need to uh, uh, follow the events built NAFTA and Latvian Shipment Company uh, announcements, and then you will be able to see also this uh, recording. And we're still waiting for a question. Uh, there has been talk in the media about company called Baltic New Technologies and a possible investment in Ventspil Sport. Do you have a view on this potential investment or you know any additional details? Thank you, Erin. I mean, you, you know, I can't really uh, comment too much on this. Um, I think, uh, you know, obviously it is an exciting uh, um, New venture and and you know we'd be, I think everybody would be pleased if if um if they did uh, finally invest. It's not going to be a quick uh, investment. You know, there's it'll take many years to actually um, pause, you know, go through. So I'm probably not the best person. You should probably address the question to um, Baltic New Technologies. Thank you very much. And if there is no new questions coming in, I would like to thank you very much our today's hosts, uh, Robert Kirkop and uh, Mr. Paul Thomas. And thanks to all participants who joined us today. And also thanks for the questions and answers. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.